Kindly put us together as I bring on stage the one and only Robert Burale. <laughs> hey, DJ Cream, this man should not be walking in. Hey, give, give us something, give us something, give us something. Oh, you should send the producer. Hey, I was, I was told to give you that one. I was told to give you that one. Hi. My brother, how are you? What up? Okay. It's okay. been a minute. All right. Good to see you, bro. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Okay, sir? Yes, sir. Looking very good as usual? It's a weakness. Look at you, my thank goodness. You, thank you, thank you. Which is the most expensive shoe that you own in your closet? Are you ready for this? Of course, I was born ready. May I buy your house? No, no, I no. no, no, no. I'm, I kid you. Uh, how much? Thirty thousand, maybe. Thirty thousand. Yes. For a shoe. Yes. You don't, Bro, you don't dress 30. like an apology. Okay. You don't dress like what? An apology. Did you hear that? <laughs> you don't dress like what? <laughs> Have a seat. Thank you Apologize very much. Apologize to the chair. Apologize <laughs> to the chair. <laughs> Apologize to the chair. Thirty thousand. Three. Thirty thousand. How much? How much is it? <laughs> Why should I ask when I already know? <laughs> <laughs> Krim, Krim, you have some certain type of shoe, and I think Burali should have seen those shoes. Krim has some certain shoe that looks like a thermos, it looks like a flask. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, you know what? Eh? Over this season, at least things change. Be careful who you're talking to. Because what are you going to do? I'm your boss. You're Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, better watch your rent. Better watch your rent. Be very careful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, make it, uh, just put your hands together once again for Robert Burale on the show. Woo! This, this must be the most weird interview that I've had to do. Because... Uh, Did you repent before no, this? Because he's, he's, he's my bro. We, we know so much about each other. And I'm wondering what should I ask and what should I not ask. First of all, let's begin from here. Yes. You are known as a, as, as a fashionista, as, as a corporate trainer, as, as a pastor. But let's deal first of all with you as a fashionista. Who is the most, that is not correct English, no. but I will, because it's my show, I lose any kind of English I want. Which is the most worst dress up celebrity in this country? Oh my Jesus Christ. <laughs> No, Jesus, 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 no, no, no. had one cloth. Oh, 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 I told you, I said Jesus is the worst. No, 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 no. Oh, my goodness. Who is the worst dressed celebrity? That if you met him, you'd basically take him to a nice shop and offer. Are you sure you want me to answer that question? Yes, yeah. I want you to answer. Cream, man. No, no, no okay, Pasha and Gafla are watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Page to see what Burali said. What oh Burali my said goodness about Lord. who is the most worst dressed celebrity? Can that you ask? Ask me the best dressed, maybe. Best? Yeah. Tell him it's not his show. Best? Because, <laughs> I, don't, because I don't want you to mention me. That's why I didn't ask best. <laughs> I'm very smart. Okay. Excuse me, sir. All right. Okay. I want the worst. Because we want to help them. The worst? Mm. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know. Why are you um, even mentioning Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> Is that bad for him? Okay, let's, let's go on. I'll, I'll answer that in another You'll five minutes. Yes, I promise I do. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. Of course, we'll be knowing, according to Robert Burale, who is the worst dressed celebrity <laughs> in Kenya. <laughs> on to number two, sir. Right, sir. You have dealt so much about um, relationships, and, and you have so much wisdom about relationships. What are the five things that ladies do on their first date? that messes them up from a potential husband or boyfriend? Oh, that's very easy. And, mm. and, and it's usually, a, especially Kenyan ladies. Um, sorry. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> because us in Nigeria, we don't care. We don't share. <laughs> what is it that they do? One? The first thing they do is mm. applying lip gloss every two minutes. Sure. You know, they think it's sexy, but it's a health hazard. No, they're always like, um, so uh, are you going to check me for pizza? Yes. And then the problem is the lip gloss Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, they always end up looking like Jay-Z and uh, Diamond yeah. combined. <laughs> 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 uh, and, the, and, the, and the problem mm -hmm. is that the lip gloss is usually borrowed from another friend. Are you serious? Yeah, so it's also a health hazard. Number two is always updating uh, on Facebook and telling their friends what's happening, you know. Uh, Java things. Java and, things. And, and, and that. And then number three is that they take advantage. When ladies are taken out by a gentleman, mm. they take advantage and they want to order for things they can't even pronounce. Things that no item before. Yes. So they are ordering with peer pressure. Yes, and you can see someone saying, you can hear someone saying, give me fries and chips. It's the same thing, but you get excited. <laughs> you know? No, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what? Bro, you're a fight. No, I'm telling you, you know? <laughs> uh, they, want, they want to take advantage of the situation. Uh, give me fries and chips. Yes. There's a lady I took out, and this is a true story. Yeah. She actually ordered for hot serviette. What? Hot serviette. Before you got married, I hope. 
No, that was before I got married. Of okay. Okay. My wife right. is and yes, I was you like, know? I, 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 no, it wasn't her. Actually, okay. But it wasn't her. No, I understand. She ordered for hot serviette. I was like, hot serviette? I, I excused myself for the washrooms. And that's the last time me and dad yes, have ever of course. talked before. Another thing is uh, they keep on talking about an ex-boyfriend. Uh, mm -hmm. You can talk about your ex-boyfriend's uh, iPhone. And then the one who's taking you on a date is on a mulika muizi. You know, so it makes the other man feel inadequate. Wow. Uh, but women use that as a strategy to raise the game of this guy. So when you say, you know, my ex-boyfriend bought for me. So does it me help me as the potential current? No, it will help you <coughs> knowing very well that this is not the right person. And then you take off. And then some ladies come in uh, very short things. Uh, mm. They want to show Thailand, you know. Yeah. And you want to show Thailand, every Thailand. Yes. Did you get that one? Oh, yeah. uh, it's <laughs> Thailand, Thailand, Thailand. And Thailand. What, what ladies don't understand, mm. if you show too much skin, you are potential for bed gymnastics, but not for the marital bed. Sure. So a man will you look must, at you. You must have I enjoyed Olympics. Gymnastics. You know. <laughs> bed <laughs> gymnastics is a new one. What I'm saying <laughs> is, mm -hmm. if you realize, uh, many men take women who maybe wear short stuff, but the woman they end up marrying mm. is not the kind of woman they used to take out. True. And that is why most women who wear short stuff when they go on a date attend weddings, but as committee members. <laughs> now that you've mentioned the weddings, at least now for I have somebody who I can ask this question. Yes. Do you think um, it is relevant for a lady to consult the boyfriend before going to catch the bouquet? No, why not? There's nothing wrong with that. Hey. Catch, catch the thing. If the man is serious, hey. he will come and hug you. If you catch it and the man starts uh, showing some funny tendencies, mm -hmm. just know that's not a keeper. Start because looking at else. If you ask me, uh, Oga, I, I would really prefer ladies. Before you go joining that single ladies group yeah. uh, at the end of the wedding, uh, jumping up and down to catch the bouquet, come and consult with me. Am I ready? <laughs> because when I see the bouquet, you know this is pressure. Unnecessary pressure, uh, bro. Bouquet is like and a first and the, the problem, I've done very many weddings, and the problem is when they catch the bouquet, they expect. Uh, a proposal within seven hours. Exactly. By the way, it's, it's like not going to happen. Time like, wait, 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 Pardon? Is that like a standard? Like, is that time limit from uh, the catching of the bouquet to? Um, for me, advice, gentlemen, uh, mm -hmm. or ladies, for that matter, uh, don't date for too long. Yeah. If you date for more than five years, How and then long you get is married. Too long, for me, eighteen months is good. Eighteen months. Eighteen months okay, is good. For those ones who failed mathematics, just give them in years. It's one year, one year. six mm. months. One year, six. Six months. months. That's a good enough time. Because if you date for a very short time, it's easy for someone to put their best foot forward. Mm. If you date me for four months, I can bring forth Denzel Washington every day. Shy. And Wafula comes out after the eighth month. <laughs> 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 so, eight, 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 eighteen, 18 <laughs> months is good. And also, um, ladies, stop dropping your knickers very, very mm. quickly to the man. Because a man is a hunter. That's the fifth thing that ladies do wrong. Mm. The man is a hunter. The moment he gets you, he's done with you. That's it. Oh, he's he done with you. Throw the meat. No ringy, no tingy. No ringy. <laughs> no tingy. No ringy. No, no tingy. Tingy, tingy, tingy. Anyway, um, um. Burali. Uh, <laughs> 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 yes. Let me tell you, hanging out with this guy, bro, you have a headache, man. No, this Where? guy needs deliverance. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, he needs help. No, deliverance needs me. That's the <laughs> <best>. <laughs> No, 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 but, um, just um, now, now moving away. Now, what is all this? Be easy. Now, um, I'm, 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 easy. I'm here. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm easy. Uh -huh. uh, moving away from from all from now the dressing. Let's get a little bit corporate. There's one question that normally uh, disturb even even I at, at at some point. When the interviewer asks you, "How much do you think we should pay you?" What should you answer? First, uh, if you have been previous employment, of course, you're not going to leave a job that is paying you $1,000 and looking for a job that will pay you $500. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you must hit higher than what you're earning. And don't move because of $20. It must be a substantial move or very good professional growth prospect. Mm -hmm. So, if they ask you, uh, tell them this is what you used to earn. S tell them you're comfortable within this range. I know some people s are scared to say, but also when you say, it shows your potential employer that you're a focused person who knows your worth wow. but if you go there and behave as if you don't know who you are then why should i employ you well and you tell them you know what i know what i bring to the table so if you pay me between two thousand and three thousand dollars i think you'll be doing me a good favor it's best on what but don't go there always know your lane 
Don't go there with a copper, copper qualification and expect a gold plated salary. It'll never happen. No, no, no. You can't drink wine on a Changa budget. To understand your qualification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Burali, let me tell you what I'm trying to say is. Changa budget. Don't be modest. If you know you have it, let me tell you, and uh, if you know you have a PhD, don't walk in there as if you have a higher national diploma. But would it, would it sound or look like hey. you? Would you intimidate? Hey. No, no, the way you say it, uh, don't also short change yourself. Okay. I mean, if you have a, P, if, if you have a PhD, if you have a PhD, mm -hmm. you have gone through a lot of hell and high water to get the PhD. True. And spend a lot of money. I mean, I know how it feels. I mean, ask me, doctor. Okay, it yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what I'm saying, Krim, I mean, you know you're one of the best DJs in this country. Hallelujah. Someone will not come and tell you, uh, we only have 10,000 shillings. Can you do the thing? Say, I'm sorry. But one thing you must understand, if you know your worth, mm. some might say no, but there'll be someone who is willing to pay. But never reduce your worth to satisfy someone who does not understand what oh. a PhD is. Wow. True. I, I think we are, we, we, are, talk. We, are, we are helping somebody here. I, I, my director is still telling me we go back to, to a little bit about the relationships. And there's a question that even my wife and I at times fight. Who should switch off the lights? <laughs> <laughs> when you're going to sleep, and I hope my wife is watching, we need to sleep. Which, where, where is the, which camera should I use? Which camera should I use? Which camera? Come on, uh, director. My wife, you're watching. Who should switch off the lights? The man. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> What, what, if, what if I had already slept? It is up to you. Then but she left the sitting room late. And what if it's a DJ? You need to understand, eh. you are the protector. Ah. But not the protector from darkness. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me tell you. What happens is she needs to be a queen. Eh. Lay her down fast. Uh -huh. And then go and switch off the lights. And then walk like a king. No, no, but I no. <laughs> you, know, you can never walk like a, like a king in darkness. You know, you know what normally happens? Let me use this as a switch. And the bed is there. Yes. This is the walk towards the switch. Yes. Walk towards the switch. Yes. Now watch the walk from the switch to the bed. <laughs> But you know, anyway, do you know how, what can happen between between? There's so much <laughs> I know, a bro. crocodile, you know. There's, there's so <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, at the end of the day, mm. the man is a protector, and and if you're a DJ, cream has done a function until 3 a.m. <laughs> and the lights are off. Don't come and disturb your wife by putting on the lights. But you know, it so depends. Creeping. Creeping. But you know, it depends. You're disturbing her to do what? You know what happens yeah. in the morning. I mean, if you if you're married, yeah. you have the permission to do to bed gymnastics. Yes. Hallelujah. The government has given you permission? Yes, sir. To disturb. Yes. So the one and I the night is disturbed. Another thing that really bugs me, really, mm -hmm. I have to ask this because yes. my wife is watching them. Mm -hmm. The big share of the bed. Let me ask you. You know, you're the guys who hustle every day. Thank yes. you. So you see a six by six. <clears throat> Omera boss. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so you see the six by six board. You get, it can fit even four people, right? But why is it that these chicks actually, I mean, our wives, though, <clears throat> they have to sleep over here? You're the guy who hustles every day. Yes. Yeah. You guy, you just have this space over here. Really? Is that fair, bro? Why, why? What should we do? Who should sleep the biggest yes. share of the uh, Can I speak it as I feel it? Yes. Can, I do? can I say it as yeah, I feel please it? Please do, yeah. bro. You need to understand one thing. Your wife needs to take the, the bigger share of the bed. <laughs> Hang on, let me, let me finish. You even. No, no, I'm going to say this. Uh, we don't want to listen to the man. Can, can I say it? Okay, fine. Do you know why? Why? Uh -huh. Because she's the queen. Now, when you want to disturb her, hey. She needs to lay properly. You cannot make sense, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro, I will I never have that argument again, uh, my wife. Thank you. Please. <laughs> Baby, I'm coming home. <laughs> Disturb her, please, tonight. <laughs> but, uh, but my only problem is with ladies is, uh, yeah. when I come home at night, and this is only for the married people, yeah. I come home at night, and, and I want to disturb you. Then you tell me, don't touch me. Don't touch me. I, uh, please, Burale, tell ladies, stick to your decision. <laughs> if you say don't touch me, because this is the problem. They'll tell you don't touch me. <laughs> but, uh, but the way they are sleeping, the way they are... <laughs> <laughs> let, let me tell you, let me tell you something. Uh, let, me, let me tell you how to do it. Uh -huh. Oh, let, uh, let me tell you how to do it. Uh -huh. Jesus Christ, sorry. <laughs> Men are like instant heaters. Uh -huh. Women instant heaters. are like jikos. You can't come home at 10 p.m. Mm. and tell and put your thigh on top of your wife and expect some gymnastics. You have mm. to start. If you're going to get home at 
8 p.m. Hey. You must start at 10 a.m. Where? Let me finish. <laughs> Let me <laughs> send, send her an SMS. Hey. And then at 2 o'clock, hey. send her a WhatsApp voice message. Oh, yeah. And then at 5 in the evening, hey. if you, if you know you have a soprano. So just put your hand there and then give a body work <laughs> And then send, send a, a nice, sexy voice. You have a soprano, bro? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbors cannot hear of this. <laughs> So when you go home, prepare your wife for about six hours. Homie, what? Hey, so by the time, hey, yes. Hey, hey so preparing, the, preparing pilau and preparing your wife are the same thing. Yes. <laughs> so you need to take your time preparing your wife. <laughs> Burali. And that's how it is, bro. Six you hours, need. bro. But you know, some, we have some Africanness in us. You go home and you tell the wife, turn the upstairs. You know, <coughs> it doesn't work like that. For a man, you just touch him. And it's all over the place. We are ready. But for a wife, mm. it's a six up. It's like making beans. You know, you put it in a pot and you warm, take it slowly. You mm. start by low heat. By the time mm. you're getting home in the evening, it's on full heat. You know, Ofweneke, six hours, that means I went to South Africa, right? That's four hours. Yes. I did shopping. Yes. Mm. Six hours. Yes. You were you actually arrested <laughs> by the South African police for not having your, your, your pop, po, uh, proper particular. Re and really now? released you. You really have to now. go there, really, yeah? Uh, yeah, you see what he's doing, though? <laughs> see what he's doing? <laughs> but that's how it is. It's, 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 it's how we have been wired. Men and women are very different. But what about being random, spontaneous, bro? Yeah. Oh, once in a while, there's a place yeah, for that. But also, disagree come with, home at I, disagree, with, I, I disagree with ladies who just want to be prepared for six hours. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're not an exam all the time. Yeah, you understand? I'm wondering, it's like paper one, paper two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Practic the practical. practical. So you, 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 <laughs> you, you, you have to... You, you have to you have to be spontaneous uh, i mean when i get married i'm gonna be spontaneous you understand what i'm saying so you're not married i used to be married <laughs> 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 <laughs>